Okay, we'll open up the November 5th uh, Civil Commissioners meeting, Elaine I. Bill I. Doesn't look like anybody's online, right, Jeannie? Can you see? Okay, Mr. Hollow, I imagine you're here to speak to us on something, if you'd like to sit at the table. Sure. Thank you for welcoming me here. Uh, so long story short, uh, a tenant at the Two Sunset Road property uh, who is occupying the property um, left, went back to their country of origin and um, unbeknownst to myself, uh, they didn't return. Uh, the family members that were in the property um, uh, were there. However, uh, when I received the sewer bill, um, noticed it was high and I spoke to them about it. Uh, we finally found the situation was that uh, there was a, um, a me mechanism in the toilet causing the toilet to run. Uh, I contacted the water department. The water department uh, told me to correct it um, before filing abatement. We did so. Um, so I filed uh, an abatement, appreciate you granting it. Um, however, um, received the second bill uh, and it was high, but I wasn't uh, you know, thinking that um, it was corrected, but it still was on the next uh, water bill, the, the situation. So it's been corrected, but that's just the bottom line. So um, I submitted an abatement application uh, which was granted, but it was during the time after it was fixed, but that period of time was still, uh, I guess, in the second quarter bill or maybe the third quarter bill, whatever bill it was. So it caused the uh, meter reading to be still high. So um, just wondering if you could abate it. I understand if you can't, appreciate if you could, but uh, that's uh, what occurred. What do we end up taking one, one quarter, the highest quarter? Debating that, yeah, yeah, the six, the six, six eighty two six. six. Okay, 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 so okay, that's how it goes. Um, yeah. I'm still a little confused, so there were like, I'm. Trying to repeat what I think I read. Right. Sure. It would say two months out of three months that there was a problem, but that two months overlap the quarter. That's the quarters <clears throat> when he realized it, it was still in the four, the next quarter, right. still the problem. Yeah. It was fixed in the interim of that quarter. So there was residual that was still fault. Yeah, I, I was in the same situation by the time I realized the by the time I got the bill a month later after the getting meeting, I realized that there was there was a major leak and it was 160,000 gallons. So I asked for David for the for the month month of that um, before that, not the next month, 30 days into it. Yeah, okay. And so we, sure. It was great. I was granted one quarter. Okay, no, it's understandable. High, and that was the highest one. So yep, that's no, totally understandable. Yeah. Yep. So I just wanted to yeah, make everyone aware of what yeah. occurred. So okay, well appreciate it. Bye, thanks. Have a good one. Thank you too. Right, thanks. Okay. Since uh, I passed out the water bill, yeah. uh, the, this is the back of the water bill. We need to let this Stacey the know. Old one, this right? is the, the, yeah, the old one. And I just highlighted what I thought um, the changes we needed. And Jeannie can work with, um, I'll give you this one. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I thought that we, we've got, the rate effective date needs to change. The service charge per quarter, the yeah. thousand per gallon, and then I highlighted at the bottom, the hours of the sewer department need to change. And I don't know if if it would help. You can talk with Stacy maybe to have this. It says water billing and meter questions first. Maybe this quarter we put sewer bill questions first okay. to see if that may help with some questions. But other than that, I don't see that there's much real estate to add other than maybe just modify some language. 
Is there any way? Um, I mean, I think everyone's used to this, you know, kind of so keeping it the same, I think, is a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm just wondering if we can bold our stuff. Kind of the, you know, we have sewer rates is bold up here. Yeah. Just bold it down here where we start the sewer building questions. Maybe put an asterisk up here and an asterisk down there. So if you're a sewer person, you go from this right down to there. Just yeah. you nope. Know, and bold in the sewer building question should be right there. Then that would just kind of connect the dots a little bit more. But yeah, keep it. Don't mess with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No? And, and you can see they have an asterisk at the bottom and kind of a bigger font for foot. Yeah, I was trying to give the idea. Somehow connecting the dots for us. Like an asterisk and maybe just make sewer billing questions a little bigger, kind of like that. Or two asterisks, yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, the important update, maybe take those asterisks off. That would confuse what I'm saying, but keep that bold. But use the asterisk just for sewer up here. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking up here. Yeah. That was sewer. That's what's not a hot sewer. That's a, uh, yeah. Follow along. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just, and th yeah, those asterisks, are, I didn't think of that. So take those out. Important update is fine. Yeah. At least that's at the bottom. It's yeah. more of a general thing. Mm -hmm. And that's it, even if we kept it, the, the change for a couple of quarters, and then if you know it made sense to revert back, that's fine. Yeah. But I think, and, and yeah. making sure our numbers clearly distinct, really, it's, you know, see if that works. And if it can, I, it probably can't, but if there can be any color red or something, it oh, probably sure. can't, but if we can, that would be good too. It probably would be. I don't know if it makes any difference, but what usually happens is the cut line for the the return receipt goes right to the yeah. line. I know, you know, so when they send when they send the bill back, they, they don't have any of this information down here. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know if that makes a difference or not. I mean, you know, would the bill be? This whole what the, the return receipt is the whole bottom third of this pay paper. It no, goes yeah, right yeah. Through, it goes right through that line. So all this information gets returned with the bill. If you mail the bill back in. That bottom piece goes with it. So I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Maybe the bill be down here. I mean, have this be where it gets cut off? Yeah. Nicole? If you could cut, no, I'm looking at what you're saying. Yeah, this whole section here down on the bottom gets returned. Yeah, but if the, if the bill is below all of this, it's that it, right? No, it's, it's, it's on the right. other side. On the other side, the bill's on the other side. And so you, oh, get, you get all the, the meter readings and everything, and then on the bottom, okay, I don't have a see. So I don't know if that makes a difference <laughs> if it gets that return. They don't ever have that. Well, so to Elaine's point, what about if we, if you did draw it up for us, and that was actually more like where sewer rates are based on 100% water use, there's no dis discount for outside water use, asterisk for sewer questions, put it up in that area. Yeah, shift, shift the other example. Yeah. Yeah. You would probably call before you return it. If you want to check with Stacy and see yeah, how much flexibility she she has and what they would yeah. be comfortable with maybe for a couple of quarters. Okay. And then again, it wish she controls the back of it. Um maybe a couple of quarters just so we can make sure we get all the phone calls. And then if they're more comfortable switching it back after that, you know, work we can you, yeah. you can work with her and yeah. see what but that, that's the gist. At least the highlighted ones, we know we have to change. As long as the information is there as far as how it works. Yeah. Because I believe November 15th was when she needed it by, so if we can give it to her sometime this week. Yeah, then, I'll talk to her tomorrow. Yeah, give her plenty tomorrow. of time. <laughs> okay, so um, meeting minutes, 10, 15, 10, 22. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Quick questions. As far as the start date is concerned, I mean, if you put any, I'll put the date that we, we voted this in. Yeah, no time date for us. Start. Yeah. So, but it's not going to take effect until the March. The, the March bills. Right, the March bills. So we got the meter readings were at the first of this month, the, final, the meter reading for that last quarter. So from eight, you know this month on, the next three months, that this applies. Yes. Okay. Yes. So slowly to the effect of 5 one, Needs to change to 11 one, 24. 
but the customer won't, won't see it. Okay. They get it. Which so we're sending the letter out to you. Know, you know what I mean? They, they, it's, it's reflected. It wasn't from that date and then charged it for a month. Right. Um, Minutes. Okay. 1015 and 1022? Sure. We put in there recommended discussing connecting with the source. That's what we recommended. Yeah. We asked uh, Dave and Gene to follow up on that. And just to put that in there. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. And since we're there, you, you want you want to update us on anything? So I did a little research. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. We should probably vote the, the meeting minutes first. Yeah. So I'll make that for make a motion. Uh, yeah. Make the request to add on number two of forty everything that the sewer commission voted to request uh, superintendent and the done to evaluate hooking up to the sewer, check into it, and evaluate hooking up to the sewer. Okay. Motion, I guess. Remove the amendment. Yeah. Yeah. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sorry, Dave, but we can that stay going. That was what? What date was that? 1022. Okay. Yeah. That was the amended one. Okay. So then you offer the cake as well? Or that... We can do it. So you can do it. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept our 14 minutes. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, he does, Good? Yeah, all yours. So on 48 Evergreen, I did some research on it, and it does look like on our original plans that I brought the next slide, but on Evergreen Street here, it shows three connections side by side. It should be house 48, 50, and 52. So they were part of the original plan. Okay. Uh, and I then pulled out the sewer cards for those three addresses. And it shows a stub going right to the edge of the street. So we've got the connection there for them. Have they been painting it for better, right? You know? Uh, I don't think we have any better. Yeah. So um, they're looking to update the property from the septic system now is currently a three bedroom system and they're looking to put a seven bed system in place. So obviously they're on the main sewer line to Evergreen. It's the only house on Evergreen that never died in. So I think at this point, we've got to look at having, where they're going to be redoing the septic system to handle a seven bedroom system. Um, this is a time for them to connect. To but, the they, sewer and but they've never paid a better one to. Somehow there, was a, there were a few. This is one of them, must have been one of them. A few that were, I, I re, after the meeting, I recall some of this, we have, not a fight. We yeah. had we had such a demand sewer connections. We looked at which ones weren't glaringly bad. Okay. And which one, you know, there were many of them that were glaringly bad that most of them paid a betterment. So I don't know how this would sneak through that, but most of them paid a betterment so that in 20 years or in whatever they would hook up eventually. They they could upgrade the septic system that only the Board of Health gave them a kind of a waiver. They didn't upgrade it to weak code. They have to just to get cut by. Okay. Those kind of things. A bunch of things happen. This right next door here, though, um, there were three houses that <clears throat> said, we actually said, you don't have to hook up. If we will, they weren't, they were up here. There was no clear, clear failing septic system. And because of this, we, we offered that. And they said, no, no, we want to hook up. So that's how all the, the rest of the street got hooked up. Okay. Particularly down there, down the cloud, it was all it was a mess. Yeah, I think I put in your package too. Mm -hmm. There's a set of plans. So it's kind of a, an interesting area that there are houses that actually fall behind, you know, the first house abutting the street. And then as you go further back, so there's house 44. So that's yeah. included in there. Backwards, yeah. Um, so the access to that property is actually along Chris Baraka's drive. 
Yes. It, it's yeah. a common driver with Chris Baraka. That's his house there. Yeah. So Sometimes. all those houses in that whole block are all tied into the yeah. tour, except for that one out back, number 48. And maybe they were grandfathered in, maybe there was a new septic system put in back in the day. And, and it could have been that the stat, like Brian says, there was no capacity because, yeah. I mean, if the, the combination of all these, yeah, look at the dates here. I see, I don't see the end of this, it's 2003. <laughs> Uh, they're all cut off. Which, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna right. assume because it's part of a, of a the 44 right away. Cuts off in 2000. I it, think it was it 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 didn't have the time, it doesn't have a front of joint. They're all six of yeah. 2000. Okay. Could have been a variety. So that was right about when we were in the middle of the connections. Yeah, so that, that would have been, you know, and we, were, we didn't even have, we were still doing this a piece going up to. Duxbury and Conline. Okay. So we didn't know, and then we, this is when I, you know, I started working with the uh, people who were the uh, the standing rink and that whole that whole complex yep. was being thought of. And I mean, I went out. We had meetings with them. I'll not forget this. We went out and had meetings with them, and uh, they had these parties, like because they wanted to. Help the sewer, you know, and we and they actually talked back to it because everyone this is a great idea, we should hook up. And, oh, <laughs> time out, we can only have 300,000 gallons. <laughs> so it was really, in, yeah, so that's 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 the time period. So it's kind of in that, it's funny what they, they have. Um, have um, I guess it would be a matter of now just saying to Board of Health, we think it's time for them to hook up. So I, I would imagine we've got to generate a letter, yeah. Uh, Basically, saying they have to tie in because the sewer passes in front of their yeah, property. Yeah, I'm kind of fine. The sewer passing in front of your property. Yeah, it's just, but technically, it doesn't. It does. so they're on, they're, 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 their frontage is not within Evergreen Street. Well, because it, it's a common driveway. But, but well, then the driveway's not there. Well, they have to have it's, 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 it's a right away. The house was built so far back. It's, it's the right, this is the right away. This is their access to that property. Right. That little that little wide, that little narrow strip. They used to drive this way to get to it. And then this house here sued and kept them to stop driving this way and go to where their actual right of way is. It's mm -hmm. down this way here. So they're technically, if you think about it, they're not on. I don't know whether stubs and they were picked up originally in the plan and put a stub in for them. Let's do, yeah, because this is, this is the house, this is the house lot, 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 and this is the house lot. And this house lot, I don't know what their frontage is. It's actually, it's actually this little narrow. Yes, yeah. so they have frontage. I mean, they, they, they don't have frontage. But they have frontage. If there's a, if there's a driveway, that's, they have frontage. Okay, have if, frontage. if you want, if technically, if that's, if that's the case, they have, they have a wonderful but, wide region. Let me clear up. Kind of five doesn't care about frontage. Kind of five says, if you are on a sewer, you have connect the sewer in front of your house and can connect, you have to hook up to a sewer. That's all it says. Yeah, but how did Prospect, Prospect Court get away from it? I think there were a because, few places. That, that was a little drive, that was a driveway to their property. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what Prospect yeah. Court. They're, they're connected now. They yeah, are now, yeah, they yeah, think yeah. they're voluntarily yeah. linked to it, but there was a little condo complex but, at the end of Prospect. They, correct, the, yes. The central idea that was even different. That's I mean, the school. Different. Yeah. First of all, they're doubling, all the double entire the septic system is a cost involved, and it's a state, it's a state facility. So I think both the Title V, they were originally meant to be connected and we didn't have capacity, we now have capacity. Um the uh we have pumps available. If this is downhill and they need a E1 pump, we have a pump available. Um, I think of all the everything that we've got in our rules and regulations says they have to. Okay. So um, it, it definitely going to behoove them if they're going to use it as some sort of a state run facility. Yeah. And the state would have the money. They would have the money. Have the yeah. And there's two veterans. And they're going to be paying for it anyways. As far as it's $44,000. Yeah. To Brian's point, I, I went and actually looked up some information on Massachusetts state law today regarding sewer systems. And it talked about if Specifically, if your comprehensive water resource management plan, as defined by the DEP, um, had the specific 
zone in mind mm -hmm. to, to help with all your nitrogen loading and all that. Um, that any property on that system has to tie in. So regardless of whether there was frontage or not, it kind of talked about if they were in your initial CWMP plan. Mm -hmm. And I imagine where it's marked on the plan as having each uh, connection yeah. tied in and, and a stub rod area that they would fall into our plan. No curb cut, no, no road curb, no, no road. This, the, the stub was already in the road. Yes. Yeah, so there's no curb, there's no street opening from it required. There's none of that stuff that was, that was done, so we wouldn't have to do that. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you go under the Board of Health Rules and Regulations, we voted as a board to make it mandatory. That we went in front of your house and you had to tie into it. The Title 5 system, too. Title yeah. 5 system. But we, but we did it specifically in the county. Yeah, and there is reference to that that a city of town may lay out construction and clean up the right. system and require. You know, we're in a very popular mode. This is the slippery we slope. We to make it yeah. move forward. Whenever so, we're going through this, we were given variances that specifically because they because they weren't critically looting anything at the time, mm -hmm. we didn't have the capacity one way or the other. Yeah, and we had to make some decisions. decisions. Yeah. So yeah, I just give Board of Health a, a heads up because I'm sure there'll be a discussion yeah. with the applicant with the Board yeah. of Health. And there is uh, a meeting that they have to come up with the planning board, Board of Health to be involved, and then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get that. So we'll just generate a letter, and uh, as far as the betterment on that, if it's a seven bedroom. It's... Two, two. That's cheaper than an operating system. Yeah. Really. And we'll take care of the nitrogen issue. Yeah. And do you want to also put a note there? Would they like to ask for um, additional flow and pay for it at their location? Mm -hmm. They got seven there now. They could they could actually make the big the building bigger because now they're not putting a septic system on the property. It's on the T and it can go five stories. Just think of that. <laughs> <laughs> only kid, only kid. Well, I don't know. I just, I just because now they they can they could yeah, the they, they could make yeah. The building bigger and, and, and you know have more people down there if that's what they're looking to do. Um, they they wouldn't have to stick with seven; they could go to nine or twelve. Or I would throw it in there on the letter. And yeah, yeah. Inflate the system. We're inviting we're inviting you to buy additional flow if you would like. <laughs> All right. To reserve additional flow. Is that is that kind of through a private entity to do this? Or is it is actually the state agency? So Elwin Adult Behavioral Services, 48 Evergreen. They're uh, basically looking to change the site plan and use a property as a seven bedroom adult emergency respite program funded by the Massachusetts Department of Mental Health. So Department of Mental Health is actually paying them. Elwin, it's it's right. It's one of those uh, grant, grant type things. No, I happen. understand it's going to be staffed one final. Yeah, yeah. It's like the place up on me, off of uh, Chemistry near High School. Mm -hmm. It's set back in the woods. So it's a place yeah. right there. That, same thing. It's oh. staffed twenty four seven. It's ah. got like fifteen people. Yeah. From the board of health point of view, they came in like we they had built that thing, and within ten years the system failed, and they came in to put another one in. When I was on the board, oh, because, wow. because, of, they met, because of the yeah, yeah. because of the people who were living in there, yeah, they, they, they didn't care what they put in the, in the septic system. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, the, that's the second priority for sewers up there for that mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, what do we have for Links Way? Is that the Links Way? Uh, well, we can both chat on that, I guess. So, Links Way. Um, <laughs> We, oh, I met with the people at Links Way the other day and determined what they were hoping for, for where we start the seed process and where we stop that and start mulching. And we came to an agreement 
um, um, painted a line in the, in the dirt over there. So CC is aware where that delineation is. And they're going to see to the left, mulch to the right, and mulch to the back. And I think they're waiting right now for the irrigation people to come in to see about where they can set their spray. Okay. Not we the we them. At the Kingston. The elementary the school. school. What? The elementary school. Elementary school. Down the street, right? Cross from Cancun, down that way. This used to be precinct four. I remember that. So, yeah, Lynn's Way is under control. We're just waiting on the irrigation people. And then um, once that happens, they'll be seeding. It's getting a little late in the season, but we'll see where it goes. And mm -hmm. we verify, I verify that they're actually putting not our seed mix down, but they're going to actually put grass, like oh. Kentucky bluegrass, they have that little strip to see that they can. I was hoping they would, I, just by not talking about it, they just spray it with all this green stuff and then all these weeds that come out. That's what we wanted. We were going to have to put them with the rye and everything. Well, the, right now, they should put, again, I, they, uh, we're going to find out at the inner rye that I expect they changed to actually got put in because. It should be growing this high by this weekend. They did go and water it. They did go back and water it. Oh, yeah. We got two warm days, so that's good. They went back and watered it, so we'll say that nothing was growing Friday. Sunday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday was supposed to be a percent chance of rain, maybe? Yeah, it's getting worse and worse. And that's getting less and less. What's going to happen, what I'm really worried about, is this one that's going out south of Cuba. Yeah. All the models this afternoon. Came into agreement. It's going to go up off of Florida, come right across Louisiana, and drift up through the United States and sit right on top of us. Really? Yeah. It's going to just sit and soak everything. So we're going to go like typical. We're going to go from nothing, yeah. and then yeah. eight yeah. inches yeah. of rain. Yeah. Uh, then... Totally washed out. Yeah. Uh, gee. And when is that? This weekend? Yeah, we'll keep watching. You'll see. Oh, no, no, not this weekend. It'll, this weekend. You know, like a week of like a like week next week. Wednesday, yeah. maybe next oh. Wednesday, Friday, and then it'll start snowing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it'll be cold. The yeah. <laughs> the cold front will push it over the top as it sit there. Um, then we can just segue into the leaching fields and updates, and as we, you know, the uh, funding ex was extended to. January, so that's good. That's the that's just the borrower, right? That's not to, to start paying it back. That that's right. It's to um, utilize what remaining Funds. money. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What was out the paperwork? And then and, and, then, and then when do we actually does that push the start start date to paying it back another six months out? I don't believe so. No, that that, that hasn't been part of the conversation. Okay. Yeah. So okay, so Brian or Dave, whoever. So the uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're looking around for things. So uh, the paving, they completed the paving up there as far as I see. Yeah, well, Unless nice. there's a little touch up they have to do here or there. But uh, for all intents and purposes, they finished the paving. They did around the manholes up there for the plowing to, to take place this winter. Um, both Brian and I were on the phone with CDM uh, looking at that last well that they have to drill. The one that they had planned on was kind of off, off our property and in a location that they weren't able to set the drill rig to. So CDM is going to approach the DEP and uh, entertain moving that a little closer to the actual mounting of the, the leaching field. So that's where we're at. Just, at this point. just to close the loop on what we heard on the discussion with the uh, CDM's hydrogeologist who did the modeling. Part of my misunderstanding, not misunderstanding, I'm being unclear on this, is why it, it, it didn't seem to make sense. What I found out is just four years ago, he mentioned that they changed the criteria for their modeling to be very different, much more specific. And what happened, you know, you know this is like, you put very interesting. So about four years ago, people started to realize, I actually knew this, but and then put the two together. We've had so much increase in annual rainfall in the last 30 years uh, because of climate change um, that we've gone from an average of about 43 inches of rain to about 55 inches of rain. What that's done is changed all the hydro calculation modeling that's been done in the past 
has been thrown off a skew because now you have more rain going down. So all the groundwater levels that were static or normally at this level have all come up depending on the type of soil. So sandy soil moves, the water moves faster. The tighter the soil gets with more silt and more, it moves slower, both vertically and horizontally. So when you do a mounting analysis, they were looking at um, more of a static model. Now they're more dynamic model, looking at a lot more detail. And what's happening is because the groundwater levels have gone up because of the rainfall, you're starting, instead of being, let's say, zero is the normal one that's been used forever, now it's four, five, six, seven, eight, ten feet higher. So now when you do the modeling analysis, it makes it even more extreme. So the modeling analysis that they did, under running it static from 24-7, 800,000 gallons a day for 90 days, I think it was. It was a 19-foot mound mound. So the, this is, we're putting effluent into a very sandy soil, but it still mounds up 19 feet. Because what they have in there is a factor of about four to five feet that they didn't explain to us. Mm -hmm. I don't think even TDM realized it. The way they did, so those two and three-foot clunchers, why they put the wells there? Because they never would have touched it under the old model. Okay. But they everything raised up. And then they add it on top of it. So okay. it made all the wells we've had have to go farther away. That's what happened. Okay. So we had, we came up with that answer, but just from a scientific engineering point of view, they, now I understand it. It makes some sense. If you have a conversely right now, we're in a drought, and a lot of the wells that we put in that are 10, 15 years old that were in the groundwater, again, the soil is it's very sandy. Our well is not finding any water anymore. The, the, the groundwater table is going below them. So if the sandy soil goes down just as fast as it comes up. But that's that's why they're doing it. Scientific basis for it. So interesting. Yeah. Our old leaching field, our current leaching field that we're using now, our monitoring wells, it's actually a corner of it showing the wells are right on the exterior of the dragon range up there. Yeah. But now you look at the new leaching field and they wanted it, you know, quite a ways, hundreds of feet into the woods. Yes. Oh, okay. So as opposed to being right there in the, in the scope of it. So that's where they're having difficulty in that upstream one. I think we have a good solution, the DP one. But what we're trying to say is even if this isn't agreeable, we want to start, get going. Yeah. We look out on what have wells that we can sample before we put any effluent. Just don't slow us down. Yeah. So we're waiting on word from them as far as that, but hopefully that'll be relatively quick. Um, I just want to add to you with the, with the letter, the, the equipment. Just to, while you're talking, it's fun and fancy the, the equipment we asked for and our, that I put together. Make sure that's still on the list as we do the pumps and anything else you're trying to add to it. Yeah, so the mower specifically. Yeah. Do we want that added to the Plant upgrade or this leaching field? I'd rather do the plant upgrade if we can get it, and then if we don't get it, we can count it to this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we have more than enough money for Tom Sips. So. Yeah. And on the same thing, the 10,000, that, that's the 10,000 that this one talked about, I'll give it in a second. Mm -hmm. That we put on that one. Okay. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because we gave that two, not three months. Now that that's not on that current list, but I will add it. But yeah, I, had, like, I had mower on my session for tonight just to check with you on that and see how you wanted to approach it. Okay. Yeah, I think that includes that in there because that covers a bunch of things for us. And I did confirm with on the same idea of leaking field, confirm with Matt Corella. Yeah. We went back to see um, they're gonna take down this turtle fences now that could be the turtles are back to sleep again. And of course, it's 95 degrees right now. We, they're probably wondering what the hell is going on, like they did last year. Remember last year, it snowed in December 30th. Remember that distinctly. I didn't remember the date, but I do remember the snow. I went out there that day, that day to look for turtles and it snow. <laughs> <laughs> 75 degrees the day before, and then it snowed. So, um, so we're going to take all the fences down. My fellow's on board. Just to be sure, everything I gave him an email that said everything's done. Go up and look at it. Birdhouses are up. Everything's done. So we're all in good shape. Very good. Continued progress. A um, couple small items. Uh, Fraser Engineering. 
just to bring everyone up to speed, Elaine forwarded this letter to our attorneys just to make sure that we're okay. But one of the subcontractors or one of the you know subcontractors doing work for the upgrade is making a demand for direct payments. Um, CDM's take on this, and we don't have anything to worry about. So just to confirm that that's an accurate statement, we get some backing from our legal team just to make sure everything's all right. So that's in the works. Uh, as far as you know, we haven't seen any. Correct. In that, but, uh, Aiden Jones, president, um, the extension. I know we referred to that. We got our extension for the plant upgrade, so at least hopefully they'll get all our paperwork and as bills done and some of the additional equipment. Uh, this past week, the Escape and the F-350 that were going to auction, that auctioned off. Uh, the F-350 was picked up. The Escape has not been paid for yet, but I'm sure that'll happen within the next few days, and that should be going. And those funds will come back into our account? Yes. Okay. Were they so it wasn't much. They were under two thousand each. They yeah. They seen the date on the back was probably worth two thousand dollars. And the engine and transmission, yeah. the, the body itself, no. you know, the frame. What year was it? Two thousand six. Yeah, and it was on the back of the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll come back to us eventually. Uh, that's moving along. Uh, just a little incident we had that didn't create a problem, but um, a Boundary Street pump station must have had some either lightning strike or some major issue go on that it threw out the breaker, the main breaker coming in off the street. It also threw a couple of breakers inside the cabinet, and when the generator kicked on to run the station, the generator was running, but all those breakers that tripped it wouldn't let the station run. Yeah. Oh. And we got there, checked the station numbers in the morning, and it was starting to fill up. Didn't overflow yet, but uh, we're actually looking at some solutions. It's kind of one of those perfect storm things. Yeah. That, you know, you can't plan for everything, but um, we're going to do some tests this week to see if we can get a float to trigger. Yeah, let's go to that. that. Yeah. We bypass all the electric and go right to our telephone system oh. and tell it to dial out. So if everything went dead and we weren't aware of it, it hit this high float, yeah. it would automatically I'm dial. surprised it's not built into the system already. Some stations have it. But, although it goes off, the alarm goes off in the stations, but doesn't notify anybody. So if you have a generator fail to start, mm -hmm. that will call us out. If there's a power loss, it doesn't. Okay. Um, so... Because that this generator is meant to go on. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So if it comes on, we don't want to be told it's on. Yeah. We want to be told that it failed to start. Yeah. So it started, did what it was supposed to, yeah. but as it was supplying power, that break was tripped and it wouldn't let the power pass yeah. through. So we're going to research some ways to see if we can get through this perfect storm scenario that it would at least call us out and let us yeah, know right. hey, if something it's really something. wrong comes down. Yeah, they're asking like a 12 volt system. Which you hook up to a battery that charges continuously, and then if everything shuts down, the generator shuts down, and that float gets too high, it'll call you. Yeah, because that's pretty good. Control. And our phone, <laughs> our, phone, <laughs> our phone system is on a battery backup system. Right. So as long as it triggers, they can call us. Yeah, so they they they, they, they gotta have the technology and the water sensor. You know, the water sensor. No, things you'll fix it. You'll never use it. <laughs> exactly. But hopefully. <laughs> At least yeah. hopefully. If we, then, then the next morning you get calls from people that down the stream, they're going, oh, someone's going right back up into my bathroom. And they say, it's like, oh. yeah, luckily <laughs> we didn't get any of those calls. But, yeah. you know, in a station that has high flow, like, you yeah. know, if that was happening at, you know, Rocky Hump and John Crew, it would have been a different story. Yeah. Boundary Street doesn't get much flow. Yeah. Um, we went through and repaired or replaced our two air relief valves a couple months ago. There was one that got um, some debris stuck in it. So we ended up going out there about three weeks ago, late night, and shutting it off. We got in there last week, took it apart, and found pipe insulation stuck in our air relief valve. So that was unexpected. Yeah. So, insulation. So when you wrap your Copper pipes yeah. are running out to an outside faucet. Yeah. You have that tubular 
not a cutting type pump, which is basically yeah. high, high volume, high pressure, and yeah. really pushes it up. So it basically <laughs> pumped it upstream, loaded up through the air relief valve, which is a two inch opening, and then <laughs> plugged, and itself and in plugged a perfect <laughs> storm. But these are the things that, you know, yeah. it was uh, 11 o'clock on a Friday night. Oh, jeez. Um, it was actually the night I was flying out the next morning to Chicago. So that was. So these are the kind of crazy things that have been going on. Yeah. And then we had a new grit screw motor that uh, after two and a half years just completely melted and cried. So it's been kind of a crazy um, eight to 10 days for us. But, yeah. yeah. So, you know, just, I'm just saying, I have these funny, funny things. I've been doing the WBF, lots of things about cyber security or wastewater and water treatment plants. Big deal. I've been doing mm -hmm. lots in the last two months. You does our new SCADA system have any kind of cybersecurity like a flag that <laughs> something that would say that someone's trying to get through and so this sounds weird. The, the people that work yeah. on our SCADA system, they won't let anyone else touch it. We don't let anyone else touch yeah. it. And everything has multiple passcodes to use. Yeah. Can they tell you that you know they have some so when when someone tries to go into it, even one of us, and if you don't put in the right password, it'll send an email to Ericsson to let them know that someone's trying to get into the system. Okay. So if this thing of that happens, I can tell you. Yeah. Well, and even listening to these odd things, if we didn't do the plan upgrade and the five million dollars of replacements and upgrades of the existing system, oh, we'd yeah. be hearing a lot more of this. Oh yeah. Though the pipe insulation is unique. That's so I mean, they can tell that get through. I mean, even going through an impeller with a high, you know, high volume pump, the impeller, the space between the outside of the impeller and the casing is like a millimeter. Yeah, there's no, there's there's no room there. Yeah. So it had to have flattened the thing out somehow. You know, that stuff is pretty dense. They had to have flattened it out and thrown it out Jeez. without just tearing it. Without, you know? Yeah, without shredding it. Yeah. There's no way that someone could lift a manhole somewhere in the system and do a bunch of stuff down there and put the, the cover back down. It's on a force you know, Beyond yeah. that, beyond it's that on. pump. No, not beyond the pump. Okay. Before, before it, yeah. Before, yeah. After it, no. Oh, okay. There's right. no so way to get in. So there could be anything. Somebody was trying to unclog the toilet and go oh, put suck down into it. Yeah. Some yeah. stupid thing like that. Or a piece of pipe came from from the yard it had some of those inside. Yeah, yeah. I never saw it. Yeah. Plumber never saw it, put it in, installed it, and yeah. could, <laughs> get a piece of that down the toilet. Right. I hope the other half's not in the system still. Yeah. <laughs> nine, I can just see it. That's a five hundred million. A nine-year-old nine boy and his twelve-year-old brother. Hey, Joey, let's watch this. <laughs> yeah, what, really, what's this thing go? <laughs> it's not the worst. Hey, boys. Uh, <laughs> Another thing coming down the, down the road, not till August 25th of 25, um, our discharge permit will expire next August. So I uh, kind of talked to CDM about getting them involved with re-upping our permit for us. So that'll, that'll happen. I didn't want to say this when you brought that up, but so I do those all the time. I'm not going to do this one, say, but just six months ahead. It should say in the permit at the end, it says six months. You need six months lead time before it's done. Okay. But they, they have plenty of lead time. It's, it's pretty straightforward. But the uh, EP gets EMC if you don't. I'm glad you picked that up, by the way, because they get EMC when you don't. Give them enough time? Yeah. yeah. You know, and you just hope that when they have to call you, they don't like that. Yeah. Judging by their workload and their response to some of my other recent stuff, we think we give them more than six months of benefit us. Yeah. Yeah, on from my point of view. Uh, and then something that came on our plate today was uh, the insurance for the leaching fields. So they have a few questions as far as uh, 
date of completion? Do we have a completion date? I'm going to imagine to, we should have a, maybe going into next spring to cover. Did you say substantially complete? Um, it typically says substantially complete. Yeah, was the progress satisfactory? Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. yeah, I think we need to get CDM and to make this official. CDM and yeah, CC, they, they, they have on their contract, and it's all the contract, all the stuff we that they have substantially complete, which means it's just minor financial items. Yeah, that would be the date that legally is, you know, all the money has been, uh, or ninety nine percent of it's been appropriated and and allocated. Yeah. And then the whole yeah, that would be, yeah. and stuff. So, so we're, we're, we should be there. We, 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 so I just read, reach out to Tom and have yeah. him kind of speak to those few items and everything like that. So, okay. If you look at, at uh, Christina's, she has that on there as a milestone. Okay. So it's just that's part of the contract. Right. Okay. We don't want to No. <laughs> We've made it this far. I think that covers everything I needed to uh, Brian? So the only uh, on the same call that we had, um, David and I had, I had asked for a CDM to do a brochure. Okay. A brochure, and they're going to be able to do it. They gave me a budget of no, probably no more than $10,000 that we should be able to do that. But they'll upgrade this. Nothing fancy. The same, same kind of everything, other than taking out the um, new set of golf course. It's going to be in there as a potential. Okay. It's not it's highlighted here as a big deal. Just take that out and replace it with the upgrade, the skater system. Another day, we talk all that. But you know, just here's the new shape skater system. Here's the new tanks. Here's the releasing field. Here's an overview of a you know picture of the building. Here's oh, the good. releasing field. And this take this schematic, which is a little more technical, because I'm looking at this being something we deal with. High school kids and training and the public, anyone who's you know STEM kids. It's not just a little cartoon. This is actually what an engineer would look at, so they can get interested in it. No, that's so, great. So they'll and they'll we'll, they'll do it in a way that we can make copies of it. Same thing, folding out. They put it on. Uh, you know, this is not beyond me, but you know the. Uh, oh, they're talking about a QR code. QR code and oh really? Put it on our website. They're also going to help. Uh, with upgrading uh, the GIS. If I went on the GIS for the town and uh, I brought this along to show you, I didn't know that was on there. So this is off the GIS. The town actually has a sewer on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not at nearly accurate. No. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, it... And I mentioned this, this is something that, so they have, these are all the manholes. I don't know what the pink things are, but they have the manholes on there and it's pretty interesting. It's kind of so uh, that's what's on the system. The so grinder pumps, I think. They had the pump stations. Pump stations. Oh, these aren't grinders. These okay, there's oh, no, the pink, the, maybe the pink ones are the, the, the OE ones. That'd be interesting. Well, so so the the pumps? I, I don't because years ago CDM did give the GIS company All right. that he said a, I think it was thought, CAD. Ben thought that they may have helped with this. So yes. it's it's way out of date, but it's still. They will do it. Right. They'll upgrade our GIS system for us. Good. Okay. Then we'll have this brochure. And then they'll also take what we were trying to do earlier, that plan, upgrade this plan so it's accurate. Good. What we've started, this is, I know Dave and Gina are looking at this a little bit more. And this will be something I'd want to go, I'm going to try to keep, we're going to meet in an hour, a half an hour. I try to see Erin. She's never in an office. She's part time. Get the problem on what we talked about, see if she can help with this. Basically, doing an audit of, you know, taking what Gene and these guys have been doing, just updating this plan so we have an accurate plan. Because there's three things that are wrong that I figured out. One is, which we just figured out, Dave and I going through this, the sewer that goes along Country Club Way, where the leaching field is, mm -hmm. is in the ground up to a certain point. But the sewer that's on this plan, it goes up over here. It doesn't exist. It's shown as in the ground, but it's not in there. Okay. So, so again, it's an audit thing. So let's have everybody yep. try to figure out. So today, me and Dave were looking at that, and then I went and spoke to Val, and she gave me a contact 
because she said that she's having the same issue too that there's some overlay that isn't updated um, with CI. The AI. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so she gave me the contact information to to reach out to them. Okay. Good. So we, you know, if we can get, or probably get Aaron, maybe somebody, an intern, somebody, yeah. to help us go through and look at our records and do that. Like, like these kind of lots like the one we just talked about. Yeah. It, it, go through the just go through each one. It won't take that long, but it needs it's a detailed kind of picking thing. But yet, so that all of we now know. Who's hooked up? Who is it? You know, just finding the three studs. There's a three studs there for a reason. Yeah, agreed. You know, and we're talking 25 years ago. Yeah. They're there for a reason. And we went through that. So just kind of, you know, we'll have so in a month or two, we'll know everything we need to know. Where are the veterans we haven't picked up? Because we're getting into, which is what I'm leading into this, is getting into how much capacity we really have. Right. And so this plan that we worked on before, I asked CDM to take. And so I also found this. Keep digging. There's this plan on steroids. We have think that has up there. Is that oh yeah, the inlet. So it has it has uh, I'll just show you this. So it has the sewage system. I don't again, I don't know how accurate it is. It's definitely not as accurate as this one. Because it doesn't show anything in country club way. Okay. okay. Um, but here's the pump station with 106. So what I wanted to do is take this. Okay, that's why we're doing that. Take this chunk here to show how many lots. If you go down, so there's uh there's Elm Street, okay, and there's 106. It's this piece over here, which for all the lots are shown. And the, where the sewer was meant to go for that pump station was this whole area. There's gotta be 150 house lots. Okay. Right? There's 150 connections there. We're meant to be in, so if you think three bedrooms times 150, there's yes. a lot of water. Yeah, exactly. And then when you go here, there's Brook Street. This is meant, we never got out onto Elm Street because there's only a park there. This whole development here is hooked up, but the water department wanted to be hooked up. So we had to get the water department to come across, and then up here, this is where we find water. This whole thing up here, look at, if you look at this, all these ponds. So we'll find that's these are all septic systems under truck in trouble. They all go directly into the river, right there. Okay. okay. So this is the area where the nitrogen is going up in the wells. Yep. All these people have septic systems and they're all old houses. They're all, I bet you half of them are cesspools. Okay. That's why we put the pump station. So I want to make sure everybody, when we get this little advisory committee with us yeah. down, understanding the, what we're looking at in the original goal we had. Is a big chunk over here. Okay. If you add them all up, this is what I won't say too much. Right? But if you add a star down this up, then it gets to be a big number when you get it in. That would have, yeah. That is a, that that's is a lot. discussion later on when we talk with the selectmen and all that. But I just want everybody to have their eyes wide open. Okay. That sounds good. So this is going to be something we'll deal with. CDM will come up with the drafts. And I was telling uh, Dave and Jean before the meeting that I've got a list of the properties on Country Club Way that supposedly have um, around the line, and of those, which ones are connected. So I'll you put that, that out. You don't even know if that line is in the, the one that they're telling on here. I think you checked. There's no manholes, right? It's all buried. On the plan, there's not no manholes visible on the plans that uh, we have as far as what happened up in Country Club Way. None of that right. stuff yeah. goes on the side. See, unless there was something with, with Fred Clownsburg that happened in that my time that they did it, because they put those 40B houses right on the right. Yeah. And I, mean, I don't know. I, that, that's, again, that's an auditing. It's a big yeah. question to me. Because I kept thinking, so they were on there. Why would they put this on there if it wasn't actually in the, the, the Davis? If he did his reconnaissance, there's nothing there. No, but the, the owner of some tracks is on property to do. Installation himself. Why would you put man on Well, we know that a lot of the males groups to the grains are buried. Yeah. But if they're not, if there's two parts of the question. Are, are they paying betterments? Do they pay betterments? Yeah, then I can tell you, Country and Club Way is not paying betterments. They don't have any bills they're going to. Unless they're connected. Yeah. If they've connected, no, if they've. they're all connected, they haven't paying anything for 25 years. So, you know what I should do is where this intersecting manhole would be? 
Just pop it open and see if there's a line running. Yeah. But those could be very narrow. Yeah. Be open. And there could be a, unless it's just a stub that goes in a couple inches. Yeah, then you, yeah. you, know, you get a chance to do that because, then, like you said, they're not on the drawings, and the drawings have been really good for us, they're really accurate. Yeah. And again, with, with Captain with Fred, he put in things that, like, he built the he built that course, not the course name, but the uh, I put the course field. Name too. He the course name, yeah, that's right. He put the course name in. Yeah, gravity and the force main in. Well, did those ever inspect it or ask for No, they wouldn't let the CDM. I was the one who walked up there. I went up there many times. I have, I think I said the pictures I took of the leasing field. I was like in the woods with camouflage stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Oh, wow. I believe it. Like, yeah. No, I I can imagine that the challenge it was to get that stuff. Yeah, we're watching. Yes. And we didn't have good cameras back then. This was back when yeah. we still had the ones like this, you know? <laughs> yeah. the tripod and you know, things. Pictures yeah. are this big. You know, with the little so, yeah. here. <laughs> the flash of light. Yeah, that old light is so. So, what do we want to do for the month of November? Have a meeting if needed. Uh... Yeah, that's that's what that's really yeah, like. Yeah, I know. But, no, yeah, we come up with Thanksgiving. So yeah, and we've meeting, been meeting every or, uh, every yeah. week for like. Can I just do a yes. this update? Yes. So me and Elaine were on a call, and unfortunately, Phil isn't familiar with tax billing, um, and ready forms. So within the next two weeks, I have another meeting that's going to be like a four-hour. Um, about the tax billing and adding the betterments yeah, and good. all that jazz. And then um, I did have a meeting with Phil on Friday where we went over a lot of the consumption reports, uh, utility billing, and all of that. So I'm a little more familiar with the effective dates and good. run dates and, and along those lines. Yeah, and the meeting in a couple of weeks is going to be on the betterments on how to, um, to basically do a spreadsheet and, and upload it as mass and have that units do the immunization schedule and all of that so they don't have to be entered one by one. Uh, so that's that's going to be that meeting. And for the bill, it's the physical bill. We have to see whether or not um, there's enough lines for another betterment on there. Uh, so that's all going to be part of the conversation. So and when we get more information on that, then there'll be a meeting with the stakeholders involved, you know, like water department, whoever, collective, whoever else needs to be involved, but just trying to get some preliminary information on what does it really mean to add mass betterments, which is basically for the leaching fields. So. You just, we have another question. So is there any more information from Kathleen on going to the, uh, Betterments and where they were allocated. What did we find any more? No, we're we're wait wait no. No. Short answers no. So we're. I just want to have when we when we get into this meeting with the selection and we're that. So if I take the one point six million that we just found, and this and I give you a back. I thought my calculation for that mall was like seven point six is what they were. Yeah, I'll I, I'll double check that. Yeah. I just want to kind of come up with. Because that's another big number that comes out of what the allocation is. If you take what the mall actually has, they're close to, um, I didn't bring that email, I think it's like 70,000 gallons. Yeah, they, they've, they um, of the project cost of about 15 million between the mall and, um, which would include the apartments at the time, it's almost half of the cost of the, the project. But they're paying the whole thing by betterments. The, right? Yes, the mall and the apartments of betterments, and the mall as not the mall, the um, the apartments paid us their betterment in full, which we used 1.6 of that to pay off a band we had for all the engineering and all of that before the project, you know, was eligible for the SRF. And then the other 1.6 is in a fund that is drawn down each year for the term of the loan. So if I'm correct, then what they have allocated, what was what they paid for, including Macy's and the rest of the mall, yeah. including the existing apartments, is around 800 units. 
is 240 and then islands and there's a balance of that is this which they bet but, but extra yeah we can that's, find two that's of that 7.6 million to use the betterment number at 20 percent. that's how i'm getting that number yeah so that's already up there and that represents um I should say when I talk about the project being a fifteen million dollar project, that's after our grants, uh, four point five million in grants. So the actual plan expansion is upwards of twenty thousand, twenty million dollars. Right. Less our grant money brings it to about fifteen, mm -hmm. sixteen million. You just take so the two hundred forty is already in our system and we're already accounting for it. So that's part of the three hundred and ten, three hundred fifty, whatever it is we're seeing today. So. <clears throat> There's another, um, there's another, uh, 180, see, 240, 240, 800. So 240, so there's like 500 left, 450, whatever is left. That represents almost 200,000 gallons of capacity that's left. So when you think about, I'm trying to go ahead, so we're at 320, 340. Add two, and then we're at six, seven, almost six thousand, six hundred thousand just capacity. That's just that, so maybe a little under six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the mall, to Big Y, these other places. They've bought additional it's capacity. Back to the point that you kept seeing, and I'm kind of starting to hit me is why you think this way. That's not not this bad. But <laughs> you're thinking the same way, but it's coming out two different ways. Right. So there's less than one tank left. Yeah. Yeah. Big, yeah. And I, if I, whenever we have the next meeting, I'll bring those numbers uh, yeah, numbers probably, again, just maybe. because, like I said, like you just mentioned, Stop and Shop, uh, Big Y, um, they bought additional capacity that they're not utilizing. So they could have the flexibility in their business models to take on any type of business that may wanted to come in. So, yes. So we get an idea what those are. Yeah. To see what our real capacity Shortfall right. and real capacity left. What's spoken for? Like yeah. Right. yeah. And that's the, the spreadsheet of allocated capacities with the different tabs. But I'll I'll put it back out there just to make it easier to find. Because it's going to be in the next month. I, as I said, when we met with the selectmen, is by late January, early February, well in advance of town meeting, that we can really talk yeah. very clearly about what we have, what we don't have. We have this old MBTA thing coming up. Right. What they want to do with that. And just wherever that goes, we're gonna have to be asked questions. And the other thing on top of Copper Beach Drive, there's another, you know, we're, we're just gonna be smart about what we have left. And how it's utilized. Yeah. When we look at uh, the country club way, the way it's already laid out, and it runs right now past our leaching fields. We put a letter together and let all those butters know. Mm -hmm. that, hey, there's there's room at the end if they if they are leaching fields are failing and it needs a new system. It's you know. Yeah, another question: How many of those are actually hooked up? If not, if any. I've got I've got those numbers. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. actually a spreadsheet that um, is in the office, but it's easier just to send it yeah. back out again. Yeah. To so find all, something. You know, whoever the intern person is, you kind of bring it all together in one place. And yeah. It's like one of those things you got to sit there. It's like, a, it's like a, uh, a, a high school project or a college project. You know, it's, it's not simple, but it's very detailed. It's it very, is. It's intense. You, know, you got to really understand what you're doing and how you're doing it. And then, oh, and then whenever we have a question, hey, ask her. And, and it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a matter of going back to the paper folders that are in the cabinets mm -hmm. in the, the the books upon books that we have of the original assessments so that's it's it's tedious yeah. and see it the, right but you got to be smart too i mean it's not you can't be just let the fair go through because it, right. and you need to concentrate on it yeah. and be focused All right. so um that's all i have anybody bill so won't meet the so unless meeting. something comes up that we need to meet at. Dave, if you have anything, just let us know. Okay. We can uh, it doesn't even need to be a Tuesday. We can always call uh, within 48 hours. Just try to stay away from Thanksgiving. Yeah, on the 18th we got yesterday. That makes meeting anyway. Yeah. 
increased by that and it, 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 from the terms of the sentiment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, lastly, the 12th of November, that we have a tentative. I know we have an actual the civil education high school meeting with me. Um, that the tech group there yeah. to set up a meeting with to have the um, we went in the state water pollution control. Oh, so excellent. to get that done, I'm gonna start bringing like David and other people in. Oh, excellent. But the arrows going big time. That's that's great. That's excellent. To get that so cool. unless something pops up, right. we'll be looking at December 10th. Yeah. First uh, the second Tuesday. First and third. First and third. That doesn't sound so bad. The third. Sorry. And um, with the extension of the um, funding, CDM is going to be put, probably putting in another amendment for their time spent. Um, Services for this existing for the leaching field project. Yeah. Uh, no, the um, the upgrade. for the upgrade. I'm yeah, sorry, the upgrade. The field, yeah, no, it's not. I misspoke. It's the upgrade. Yeah, it's uh, closing out all the documentation, you know, as built and brought in. Yeah, yeah. Because this is a substantial amount of time. It's gone yeah. well past the expected completion. It's the, the selective meeting that. May not happen that we if they try to do the 12th, that's that we might do. So the meeting we might have following up on when we talk to the selecting is it's now the the third. Of December? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's six o'clock. So if we met that day, yeah. That we'll be ready. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's not test and concrete, but it's just okay. Right yeah, because that'll be after town meeting too. So like the Tuesdays is what the town of Kingston. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to study committees like this, we could actually do it outside and ask them to send the participants. But yeah, it'd be nice to have them. I'm not yet spearheaded. I mean, really have them sit at the table. I mean, yeah, really good. Ask a really tough question. Okay. I know you are. You would be really content. Okay. We discussed, I think this was before you came in. Um, Don Alkenbright sent a letter around. There's this new thing called Community Reader about things that are going on in town. Really? And they just asked the department by department if there's anything we want to add on a weekly basis. But this kind of gives you an idea of how it's set up. So it's. Is it on a web page? I'll have to jack me. Neither, neither Jane nor I'll check. If you look at the dates on it, it says covers from what's that 11 3 to 11 9. Mm -hmm. It talks about like Paul Basler retiring, uh, use boards, hunting season, and you flip it and it has like the meetings that are up Great this week. Uh, just basically anything town related with links that are going on between those dates. So if we had, say, a construction project that was going to go from X date to Y date, we could add that on there. Maybe mm -hmm. pull it off when it's done. I, I kind of, and that's, that's something that we can get across. This, this started, well, you can take this one. I can just print another one. But that sure. started just, uh, I think that was the first one. Yeah. That 11, out. 3, 11, 9. All right, yeah. So it just started this week. I guess, so, yeah. It, it reads that we've started sending out a weekly online newsletter called Community Reader. The first issue was last week, looking for departmental updates, you know, as things come up. This is great. Submissions with a start date, end date, that kind of thing. So it's just getting off the ground. They might tweak it here or there, depending on what needs to be addressed, not addressed, and what the feedbacks. So the hunting thing is, hunting is still not allowed on Sundays. That should be right there. People think that they can hunt Sundays and they can't. I thought that was only for VI. No hunting. No hunting on Sundays oh. any, at any time. Hmm. No. Not being a hunter, I wouldn't know that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it really is there. I mean, it's the only thing you hunt for, but uh, yeah, but it's, it's definitely no hunting on Sundays. Um, 
on the related item, just real quick, there's this thing that came out, my wife showed it to me, it's called Social and News. And I signed up for it, it only started last week. The entire, this is fascinating to me, the entire news paper, if you will, comes out as an internet, I mean, comes as an email to you, or as a message. Yeah, an email, I think. The whole thing is written by AI. You're There's nobody, no human beings involved. It scours oh, through these, these meaning things like this, and it picks out random selections, meaning, what the hell, whatever, and it writes to the article. It's the most well written, totally unbiased thing you've ever read in your life. <laughs> this is not a person. And wow. I, I, I have one. But if you just keep it, you, you can sign up. It's free. South Shore News. South Shore News, yeah. I just found it fascinating. Unbiased? Jeez, that's well, you have, you have, special. Yeah. It sounds like an alien program. Uh, it's <laughs> Editor, here's, uh, here's an example. Editor, Sunday. Editor from South Shore News. Hanover School Committee proposes the illegal right to vote for a fiscal 226 budget. Uh, schools Hamilton, so schools face a $1.8 million gap between low funded and level service budgets. Um, goes on and on and on. And on. At a special meeting Wednesday night, school committee members discussed the proposal to change to provide financial certainty and stability for the school district. Quote, given the failure of the last override with the town, blah, 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 um, said committee chairman, our committee member, Libby Quovo. It's just very, very factual dates and stuff. And it's all done by AI. Is it Walter Cronkite being mm -hmm. resurrected again? Yeah. Who is it? The facts, nothing but the facts. Nothing but the facts. Um, um, company doing this today? Yes. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.